Fighting enemies is hard and you get blood on your coat and sometimes the enemies hit you as well and it hurts so it makes total sense to get someone else to do it for you. That's where summons come in, special powerful attacks that call in an ally to lay the smack down on your behalf, some of which are so spectacularly OP that frankly, you may as well let them do the rest of the game for you, you go and have a lie down, let them take it from here. We've spoken on this topic before, but the comments of that video were full of excellent suggestions for even more spectacular summons, so here are our favourites as suggested by you. Enjoy! Ah, well done, my son! I hope you didn't peek. Remember, I will always be at the side of those who have found me. You can call me once per day with this, but I can't help against bosses. They're scary. Come find me again for another. South Park The Stick of Truth took the long-running animated show and mashed it together with Lord of the Rings-style fantasy, creating an RPG full of mythical enemies, magical items, and Morgan Freeman. You have potential, kid. Maybe I'll leave the old taco shop to you in my will. In it, you play as the prophesied new kid who is going to unite the forces of good and reclaim the mystical stick of truth, while the rest of the cast take on roles as fantasy wizards, rogues, and bards who you often have to face down in epic combat. Oh, you kicked his helpless ass! Or as epic as kids hitting each other with sticks in their backyard gets, at any rate. To up the spectacle in Stick of Truth's combat, the game also includes summons that you can use to decimate the opposing team, attacks so powerful that they can only be used once per in-game day. These summons include Mr. Hanky, who causes a tidal wave of feces that washes away enemies, and Mr. Slave, who… can we show this one? I'm not sure we can show this one. Kind of fun. Oh. Okay. Most spectacular of all, however, is the summon that... Is he still going? Jesus Christ. He's right, though. It is Jesus Christ. In this summon, called Crossfire, Jesus descends from heaven, arms outstretched, before nailing a superhero landing and... Okay. Pulling out an M16 and blasting everyone with automatic weapon fire. Lock and load. For quite a while. Probably not what I'd have guessed for Jesus' special attack, but you've got to admit it's effective. Elden Ring is a tough game, right up to the point where you get the mimic tier and can just sit back and let it do all the hard work for you. Yeah, just shout when you're done. Cheers. Or at least that used to be the case. A subsequent patch did slightly reduce the Mimic Tier's bonkers effectiveness in battle, but don't worry staying alive during boss fight fans. There's another summon in Elden Ring that is even more effective than just you, again, and she goes by the name of Black Knife Teach. You get this summon by killing her dad, Black Knife Ringleader Electo, which is pretty messed up when you think about it, but you won't be thinking about it for long because Black Knife Teach rules. For a start, she's super good at dodging and avoiding being hit, and therefore survives way longer than most summons. And the whole time she's in play, she'll be aggroing whatever you're fighting, meaning you can spend entire boss fights where the boss focuses exclusively on Teach, while you wail on them at your leisure. Her damage output is good, and she has an attack that reduces your enemy's max HP, but best of all, she does bleed damage, which, pretty much without exception, is super useful throughout the entire game. Also, she's much better dressed than the Mimic tier, who I know is dressed like me, but honestly, I dress terribly. We spoke in the last video about some of Yakuza Like a Dragon's summons, which include a crawfish, a Korean romantic movie star, and Goro Majima, the greatest character in video game history.
but while Majima's electric knives are certainly spectacular, for sheer deadly force it's hard to ignore one of the harder to get summons in the game, the one belonging to Daigo Dojima, the ex-sixth chairman of the Tojo Yakuza clan. Unlocked by finding 50 Tojo clan crests and giving them to a large plush rabbit thing for some reason, Daigo's summon, known as Guns of the Forefathers, starts with a cinematic fly-through of the Tojo clan's opulent headquarters. The camera reveals Daigo sat on the chairman's throne before he stands up, is enveloped in purple fire, and then summons four additional summons of his own, all former high-ranking family heads and members of the Tojo clan, each of whom is armed to the teeth with guns. Yep, that'll do it. Take that, random guys I bumped into on the street. Sure, shooting your enemies with a thousand guns or hacking them with serrated bleed-inducing knives sounds deadly, but how can you be sure that they're actually dead? Well, I know one surefire way, and that's to hurl them into the actual sun. If that's what you're after, then Iris from the 2002 Game Boy Advance RPG Golden Sun The Lost Age is the summon for you, as it calls forth a giant goddess who gathers up your enemies, and then, I'm assuming very much against their will, flies them into outer space, across the galaxy, and directly into the sun. This causes huge explosions and a fatal amount of damage, of course, but the added bonus is that the resulting… solar flare, I guess, let's say that, causes a huge surge of energy that returns to Earth and fully heals your entire party. And probably gives them a nice suntan too. Nothing but W's today. It wouldn't be a list of overpowered summons without a Final Fantasy game, or a giant thing that flies down from space to wreck everyone's sh**. So let's kill two birds with one stone with Ark from Final Fantasy IX. This absolutely bonkers summon starts with Ark taking off from a distant planet where he appears to be some kind of dragon helicopter spaceship thing. As he flies, he transforms into a towering, terrifying mech, which is impressive multitasking, considering he's also smashing through the Earth's atmosphere at the same time. Once inside the Earth's atmosphere, Ark then targets whatever unlucky scrub you've decided to overkill into next week. before unleashing a ludicrous barrage of rockets. Oh, but we're not done there. Ark then targets your enemy with a laser, and they are then utterly immolated by an orbital death beam which looks like it takes about half the continent with it. Of course, your character takes a little hop back when it's all done. Wouldn't want to accidentally get caught in that. Better give him the full three feet of distance. You have no means of escape, humans. Punishment shall strike you all as you pass through the gates of destruction. Uh, what's this spike in energy? Some kind of insane attack's coming. Watch out! Towards the end of Persona 5, things aren't looking great for your team, the Phantom Thieves of Hearts. You've all had your ass kicked by the game's final boss, Yaldabaoth, the god of control, and things are looking bleak. We can't lose like this! If we lose, the world is... I need to get back up. But thanks to a last-ditch social media campaign, this is genuinely what happens, the thieves rally enough public support for Joker, the main character, to be able to unlock the ultimate summon, a demon lord named Satanael. That's... Man, it's huge! What do you 
an immense power. No way. Is it a persona? A huge armoured golden horned demon, Satanael is basically a walking cheat code who heals your entire team, blocks all incoming damage, Impossible. and then uses his ultimate technique, an attack called Sinful Shell, which is a bullet made from the seven deadly sins that can pierce even a god. And by pierce, I mean blow a massive hole all the way through his head. If anyone needs me, I'll be tweeting my support for the Phantom Thieves. Don't want to get on their wrong side. Rest, my friend. I'm off to get that black cat. Bayonetta from the series of the same name is already a pretty formidable fighter, what with her regular attacks and her gun shoes and all the medieval torture equipment she can make appear out of thin air. You'd think that would be enough, and I'm sure this unlucky angel would agree that it absolutely is, but during the game's more climactic boss fights, Bayo is able to access even more powerful summon attacks, where she summons huge terrifying demons made of her own hair that do damage measured in the gigatons. These take many forms, like birds, serpents and spiders, but for the game's final fight against an all-powerful entity known by mortals as Jubileus the Creator, Bayonetta needs something a little spicier. That's when you can summon the demonic avatar known as Queen Sheba, an enormous towering goddess that makes the previously gargantuan Jubileus look like a gothy Barbie doll in comparison. Due to her preposterous size, Sheba's damage is measured in infinitons rather than gigatons, and hitting the max level grants a big bang bonus, presumably meaning she punches Jubileus with enough force to create an entire universe. The miracle of creation. Looks like it really hurts. There you have it, seven of the most spectacular summons in video game history. Got a favourite we missed? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit subscribe, or even join us on Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash OXclub. The link's on screen right now. Thanks for watching.